So hello. Today we're going to look at using the factor theorem and you're going to use that to along with polynomial and synthetic division to find real and complex zeros for a polynomial so that we can write it in factored form. And we like factored form because that helps us find our zeros. So we're going to start with just sort of this idea that evaluating a polynomial can be kind of complicated if you do not have a calculator. And so just to sort of highlight this, I want you to pause the video and try and find f of negative 2 for this function. So if you're back, hopefully, you do negative 2 cubed, 4 times negative 2 squared, plus 5 times negative 2 minus 5, and that gives me negative 8 plus 16 minus 10 minus 5. These combine to make a positive 1, which then at the end of the day, I get negative 7. So if we look at something related, if I divide x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x minus 5 by x plus 2, something really kind of cool is going to happen. And again, if you're doing this division, you could use regular polynomial division. But whenever I can, I'm going to try synthetic because it's just so much easier for me. And if I am dividing by x plus 2, I think about where that is 0. And so I'm dividing negative 2 into, I write down my coefficients, bring down my 1, and then I multiply these, and then I add these two numbers to get 2, and then I multiply again, and I add and I multiply, and I add, and lo and behold, there is my negative 7. So, and that's kind of a cool thing, that it's called the remainder theorem. If I have a polynomial, p of x, so in our case, we had the polynomial x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x minus 5, and I divide it by x minus c, any constant, in this case, that was x minus negative 2, that's my x plus 2, then p of c is the remainder. So when I divided my x plus 2, I got negative 7 as a remainder, and that was indeed f of negative 2. So it's this really cool thing that mathematicians came up with and discovered. So let's just practice it one more time. So we're going to find the remainder when I divide x minus 3 into my polynomial. So again, you should pause the video, try this on your own, and then check with what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put in my 3, because again, that's where x minus 3 would be 0. My coefficients, 2, 4, 3, 5, 2. Bring down my 2, multiply by 3 to get 6. Add, multiply by 3 to get 30. Add, multiply by 3. Add. Multiply by 3, that's 300 plus 12 is 312, and I end up with the remainder of 314. So now what the remainder theorem says is that remainder will be f of 3. And if I put 3 into my equation, and you should try this on your own. When I do this, I get 81 times 2 is 162, and I got 27 times 4 is 108, and 3 cubed is basically 27, and 15, and 2. This is a lot of math, but when I put this together, I get 270, and when I put that together, I get 37, 42, 44. And my grand total is indeed 314. So f of 3 is what I is the remainder I get when I divide my polynomial by x plus 3, or x minus 3 in this case. So then we can just ask you, find f of 5. And you could do all the math, but much simpler is to do synthetic division and find my remainder. So you should try this on your own. If I want f of 5, I divide 5 in. 
I'm not missing. I always make sure I'm not missing any terms because then I'd have to put in a zero. And I do the math and, and I get negative 18. And I'm guessing if you put five in, you would get negative 18 out. It's a cool thing. It's a cool little trick. Um, we're going to switch gears just a little bit. So we're going to use this trick in a minute, but I just want to sort of think about what does it mean to factor? So we're going back to numbers. And what does it mean if I give you factors? So if I say that 138, that 2 and 3 are both factors, and I'm trying to do prime factors, that means I would divide 2 into 138, and I would get 69. Now I'm going to use the fact that 3 is also a prime factor. And I wouldn't divide 138. I'm not going to go over here and start over and divide by 3. Instead, I I'm going to keep my 2, and I'm going to break down my 169 into 3 and 23. And 23 is a prime factor, and so are 2 and 3. And there are my prime factors. And we're doing this right now because we're going to try and do something similar with polynomials. We want to break our polynomial down into all linear factors. That's sort of the prime factoring of a polynomial. And we're going to use the idea of the remainder theorem to help us do that. So just start with a question. What does it mean if a number is a zero of a polynomial? Pause the video. Think about that for a minute. What I think of is that it, um, if a number is a zero of a polynomial, then x minus that number will be a factor. It means that f of c is zero, which putting together with the remainder theorem means that the remainder, when I divide my x minus that number, will be 0. So if I divide my 0 in, whatever it is, into my polynomial, blah, 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 and I get a remainder of 0, that means that my number is a 0 of my polynomial. And I can write it as a factor. So if we think about a polynomial, a couple questions. What's the degree? Hopefully, you can see I have 1x, another x, and an x squared is going to get me x to the fourth. So this is a fourth degree. Again, pause, try and find the videos, or the zeros. Pause the video, find the zeros. Remember, we factor because then we can set each factor equal to zero. Either x plus 1 is zero, or 3x minus 2 is zero, or x minus 4 is zero. And if x plus 1 is 0, we know x is negative 1. If 3x plus 2 is 0, we know x must be 2 thirds. And if x minus 4 is 0, we know x must equal 4. So then, what is f of 1, of negative 1 going to be? 0. What is f of, oh, this is supposed to be a 2 thirds. So I don't know what f of 1.5 would be. Oh, it's, yeah. 2 thirds. So this would be of uh, 2 thirds would be 0, and f of 4 would be 0. So there's this other thing called the factor theorem. And it says if f of x is a polynomial, if f of c is 0, then x minus c is a factor of f of x. That should make sense. And if f minus, x minus c is a factor of f of x, then f of c is 0. So it's sort of that two-way street. And given what we just learned, how can we easily tell if f of c is 0? We can do our do our synthetic division and see if the remainder is 0. Because if the remainder is 0, then we have a factor, and then we have f of c equals 0. So if I tell you, sort of like our number problem, if I tell you that 3 is a 0 of f, and I want to solve this equation, because I don't know how to factor a cubic, 
which is what we're doing right now. We're going to learn how to factor a cubic. So if I know one zero, like three, I want to get something that I could factor. So if I do two, negative three, negative 11, and six, and I do my synthetic division, and I get six, and I add to get three, and I get nine, and I get negative two, negative six, and zero. So what synthetic division tells me is that my original polynomial can be factored into x minus three times two x Oh, let's see, this is the number, this is the x, this is the squared. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 2, because I have no remainder, right? Oops, I don't need that x. All right, what I've just done by dividing is saying my original thing of 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 can be factored into those two chunks. And now my job is to factor this piece right here. And so I'm going to keep my x minus 3. I'm going to see if I can factor it first using my guess and check method. And I think I can, because if I put a plus 2 here, that will give me 4x. And if I put a minus 1 here, that will give me minus 1x. And I'll still have my 2x squared and at the front, and I'll have my negative 2 at the back, and I'll have 3x in the middle, and now I have this fully factored polynomial. I have all of my linear factors. By that, I mean x is to the 1 power in each factor. And I have basically factored my polynomial. So that's what we have for now, and hopefully you'll be able to do your homework.